With everything set, we need to make our title scene. This is going to be a basic menu where the player is going to be able to press the play button and go to the town to find enemies and adventure into the unknown. Okay, so first of all, we need to use a canvas. If this is going to be your first time working with Unity 2D, there are going to be some new concepts that we have to introduce, but they're actually very simple. We're going to our hierarchy tab here. I'm going to right click choose UI and then canvas to add a canvas. The canvas is the, the object, is the thing that is used for drawing interface to the users. Okay, So inside the canvas we're able to quickly add images, we can add panels, we can add uh, buttons and several other elements. Okay, So whenever you think about interfaces you have to, to think about canvases. Okay, and the interesting thing about canvases is you might have lots of elements here in this game, but if you have a canvas in general, everything that's going to be here is going to be drawn on top of the game camera. Okay, it, it happens like this because the HUD, okay, all the interface elements that we, you, you make, they need to be on top of the, the game. Okay, the player needs to be able to see the buttons, to see anchors, to see things that they can interact with. So this canvas here is going to basically show the background image. So we're going to select it, go to the inspector, and we name it to background canvas. This is the first step. Now for the render mode we have here screen space overlay, but we're going to use screen space camera. Okay, and once we do this, we have to specify what is going to be the camera of the canvas. It's a different way of using the canvas, but it's going to, to make everything easy for us. Okay. So if you do this, a new field has appeared. We have this render camera here. We're just going to select the main camera of the hierarchy and drag and drop here. Okay. So the background canvas is kind of going to adjust with the main camera. Okay. Now, once we do this, we also have to care about another thing. We have to take a look at the canvas scaler. This is what's going to be used to determine how your canvas is going to resize depending on the screen that you are using. It could be a constant pixel size, but it's better that it scales uh, depending on the resolution of your device, depending on the aspect ratio. So what we should do here is click here and select scale with screen size. We need a reference resolution. It's going to be the basis uh, of the resolution that is going to be used. So for X, we're going to use 1280 and for Y, 960. Okay. And as for the other options, they can be left like this. This is basically what you need to set the canvas. Okay. And once we have this, we just need to add a background. So here inside the background canvas, we're going to right click, choose UI and then image and here we can add the background image. However, there are two multiple ways to make this canvas, the, this background image. Okay, this is the easiest of them. The easiest of them, you just add an image and well, basically that's it. But if you want, you can build the interface element from the ground up. We can just right click and choose create empty to add an empty game object. Let's rename this to background image. And you can add the image component here as well. You just click on add component, search for image, click here and you're going to have an image the same way. As for the background image, we are going to our project folder right here, then sprites, then we're going to see, uh, yes, yeah, not world, it's battle, yes, and inside battle we have this background image. Okay, so what you do is drag this image, drop it here, it's a bit difficult to see, but it's because its pixel size hasn't been set properly. To automatically resize this image, you can just go to the inspector and press set native size. Okay, so this is how the background is looking like. It's fitting the entire screen. Okay, you can see it very well here. And this is where we're going to make our menus work. Okay, so this is what we need for the image. But now we need another canvas and that canvas is basically going to be holding the title and it's also going to hold the button. So let's make another one. Right click UI canvas. We're going to rename this canvas to HUD canvas, HUD canvas. Okay. And we're going to start by adding an image, actually a title. And even before that, we also have to change how uh, the canvas is going to be rendered. It has to be just like the background canvas. So render mode is screen space camera. The camera is the main camera that comes bundled with the scene. 
So just drag and drop here once again. We change the canvas scale size, so scale of screen size, 1280, 960, and that's it. Now, to add a title, uh, a title text, we right click on HUD Canvas, UI, Text. Once we do this, if you double click on the text, you're going to see that you can barely see uh, the text. Okay, so you should use this tool here for 2D, uh, two dimensional editing. If you click, you can see things just like when you're adding, when you're editing images. You can resize them by just dragging these blue knobs, like this. Okay, and well, you're going to be able to see text in a much better way. The thing is, because of how uh, we have these two canvases, we have a background canvas and we have a hot canvas, we still can't see the text. So I could write a big text uh, line, but well, I still can't see this text. Okay, if you were to drag this element to the right, then you can see the text. So we have a few issues. It's too small. And the biggest issue of them is that this text is being rendered below the background canvas. So why this is happening? If you select the background canvas and you look at the canvas, you're going to see that the sorting layer has been set to the full and the order is zero. And if you go to the HUD canvas, it's the same thing. We have a default sorting layer and ordering layer is zero. So these two, they conflict. You can't guarantee that the HUD canvas is going to be rendered on top of the background canvas. One way is to simply change the order in layer of this HUD canvas to one, and you can see the text here, or you can make another sorting layer. You can just click here on the full, select add sorting layer, and here in sorting layers in this inspector, we can press the plus sign and add a HUD layer. Once we do this, we select the HUD canvas again and change the sorting layer to HUD. Okay, so since the HUD is below the default one in the sorting layers list, this means that HUD is rendered on the top. It's a priority over the default layer. And as you add other layers, you can change their orders and their, their priorities. Okay, now that we can see this text, let's increase the size of this. If you click on any of these blue knobs and you hold the Alt or the Option button, you can resize at the same amount horizontally and vertically. Okay. The text that we want to add here is Unity RPG. Of course, we still can't see anything, so let's increase this font size to 130. So this is starting to looking much better. To look much better, uh, this font is too def too simple, so we can change the font here in Arial by clicking on this circle and choosing this one, Kels. And one interesting thing here is you notice that this font is too big, so we just see Unity. We don't see RPG because the text couldn't fit. So we can increase this a little bit more and we can see Unity RPG. Good. As for the alignment, let's choose center horizontally and center vertically. And also move this a little bit to the top. Okay, so we're going to have uh, our title here. It doesn't do anything special here. So what we want to add, the, the other thing that we want to add here is a play button. Okay, of course, we if we have just this, this is basically nothing. So we need to go to the HUD canvas, right click, UI, and then button. Okay, you're going to see that the button is too small, so we're going to resize it the same way. We click on a blue knob, hold Alt or Option to increase the size of the button. So it looks like this. We're going to move it down a little bit. And we're going to choose this text here, increase its font size. The text is going to be play. And we're also going to change the font from Arial to Kels. Okay, so this is the button that we have. And if you want to test this scene to see if you can interact with this button, you can just press play. Okay, if you do that, and once the, the game properly loads, it's going to the game window, and you can click on the button. You can see that you even, ha you even have this feedback of clicking and shading the button like this. Okay, so if you want to change the color of the button, by the way, you can just go to the button and change the color here in the image. Let's make it a bit gray. Okay, so good. However, uh, we are, we're close to finishing this title scene. Okay, but we need this button to do something. And what we needed to do is to change scenes. Okay, right now we are in the title scene. So we want to save this. Okay, so it's going to be used later. So we go to file, save scene. I'm going to name this title and press save. 
And in the assets folder, I want to move this title scene to a scenes folder. So let's make one. In the project folder, we're going to right click, create folder. This is going to be named scenes. And back in the assets, I'm going to move this tile scene file to the scenes folder. Okay, good. This is the first step. Whenever we click on the play button, we are going to load another window. We're going to, to, to load uh, basically the town scene. But when we do this, we need to make sure that the scene that we are going to load is going to be in a list. This list can be accessed by going to File, Build Settings, and there's the Scenes in Build List. You need to go on every scene that you want to add and press Add Open Scenes. So it's going to be added in this list. This means that this scene can be dynamically loaded in your game. Okay, so now that we have this title scene added here, uh, we want to make a new empty scene. Okay, something very simple. I'm just going to File, New Scene. I'm going to File, Save Scene. I'm going to name this Town. It's just something empty. Move this Town scene to the Scenes folder. And once we do this, File, Build Settings. And I'm going to click on Add Open Scenes just to make sure Town is going to be here. Okay, good. Now, back to the title. How do we make this play button to load that scene? So far, we've been using things that were already provided by Unity, so texts, images, uh, buttons as well, but we don't have anything uh, super specific to do this, to load another scene. So we need to make a very short script for this. I'm going to the project folder. We're going to create a new folder here and name this scripts. Okay, we're going to double click this. Now, right click, create, C sharp script, and I'm going to name this change scene. Okay, it's going to be a, a simple script like that. Once we double click this, it's going to, to open in Mono Develop, which already comes bundled with Unity. Okay, it's free, it's open source, uh, so it's going to work just fine for us. Okay, wait a few seconds, and there we go. We should have our script here. And once we do this, once we have this uh, change scene, uh, class open here, we we should be able to add a new method here. Let me just zoom in a little bit, there we go. So we're not going to use the start and update methods, even though they're used on plenty of different classes and components, we need to make our own method here. So we're going to make public void load scene, and it's going to require one parameter, which is going to be string name. The parameter is the exact name of the scene that we want to load. And to load, however, we need to include the namespace here. We can't change scenes with a, a default script like this one. So here at the top, we need to add using Unity Engine Management. This contains all of the classes, methods, and utils that we might want to use to change a scene. So now that we have this, in the load scene method, we're simply going to type scene manager dot load scene and between parentheses name. Okay, so we might be thinking, okay, we are making a method like this, but how exactly are we going to call this load scene method with a specific name? Well, the trick here is that we're making this method public. So whenever you do this, okay, and whenever you, you do, uh, you serialize other things, they can be accessed by the Unity editor. So what we want to do is, we're going to select our button game object, Let's collapse a few components here to make this easier to read. I'm going to add this change scene script here. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop. So we have this script. And now in the button, you're going to notice that there is an on-click area, on-click panel. This, With this area here, we are able to list uh, uh, multiple methods that can be called whenever this button is clicked without having to write any complicated logic. So here in the on click, we press the plus button. We need to select a target object, which is going to be the button itself. So we drag and drop here. And now we're going to determine what is going to be the callback. So we're going to click here. We're going to change scene. We select the load scene method that we just determined. And you're going to see that there's a field for us to pass the parameter. The parameter here is going to be town. So that means that whenever this button is clicked, this method is going to be clicked with the town parameter. And since this town is a string, it's going to be passed as a parameter here, and we should be able to load our town scene. 
Okay, so just by doing that, let's save. Let's also here in the scripts folder, uh, right click, choose create, then folder. Let's name this title. So all scripts of the title scene are going to be here. I'm going to put this change in here, just to keep things a little bit more organized. And now, save your scene, we're going to press play. Okay, and with the game loaded, whenever I press the play button, we should load the town scene. It's empty right now, but that's ex that's just as we expected. Okay, it's going to work like this for now while we don't implement other things. Okay, so this is it. This is basically the first step. It's a quick exercise on how to work with the user interface, how to make texts and buttons and work with canvases. And with this ready, we should move on to the next lesson where we're going to look a little bit more on how the RPG uh, game is going to work. Okay, we're going to work on the player party.